The title of my PhD thesis is Study of Paper Dry Strength Additives on Model Cellular Surface, and my name is Meng Xiao. So in the following 30 minutes, I'm going to guide you through the contents of my thesis from introduction, overview, to results and discussions. Here we have three parts. Part one is about adsorption. Part two is about strength performance. Part three is surface morphology and fire turn daisy. In the end, there will be conclusion and the outlook. So we start from introduction. This picture was taken by me in Finland, which was my favorite spot. I could easily spend one day there during summertime. However, the world is not always like the place we like. We are also facing environmental challenges. For example, those non-degradable plastics underwater, they impose potential threat to water creatures. We are very glad that our projects are working toward to the sustainable development goals which were proposed by the United Nations in order to improve human's life and uh, protect our environment. Uh, our project especially works on SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, SDG 13, Climate Action. So in today's uh, presentation, I will show you the city's objectives. The first one is to study the fundamental interactions between paper dry strength additives and the cellulose fibers. Then we want to understand how the strength additives will affect the paper performance, for example, mechanical properties, density, and other properties. Outside the pulp fibers, we were interested in the techniques that can be used to study the molecular interactions between cellulose fibers and uh, strength additives. So the last objective is to use the knowledge from dry strength additives in other application. So we know that paper packaging board are made from uh, wood, uh, wood fibers. They are renewable and biodegradable. But uh, why we need to use strength additives? So I especially like this figure this is from our previous uh, PhD student, Marlene Erickson. Here, we have two lines. Uh, they are made for guiding the eyes. The one on top of uh, crosses refers to pressing the papers in order to increase the tensile index. Another one on top of the solid squares and triangles refers to adding polyelectrolines to increase the tensile index. Polyelectrolines can be strength additives. So it's very clear that adding polyelectrolytes can increase the tensile index efficiently without compromising the density. But why is density so important? Because when you have the same amount of fibers, uh, the higher density is, the thinner the paper will be. Just imagine when you carry a milk box home, the paper packaging is very thin, you have the risk that the paper board might collapse when you're on the way to home, and it might ruin your day. So with the dry strength additives, we are able to make stronger and light paper packaging board. In this way, we will use less fibers, but we can still keep or even improve the strength. In addition, we can save logistic costs and also lower the energy consumption both in production and waste recycling. So currently, there are many kinds of dry strength additives in market. In this work, we will focus on cationic starch, uh, which are from both potato and corn, and also polyacrylamine-based uh, strength additives. So the monomer of acrylamine doesn't have charge, but it can copolymerize with other monomers, to be cationic PAM, anionic PAM, or glyoxylated PAM. GPAM is cationic. It was initially designed to be temporary wet strength additives, but then later scientists found that it can also be used as dry strength additives. So traditionally, when we want to study paper dry strength additives, we always make paper, or we first add soap strength additives onto fibers, 
Then we make paper and measure how the paper strength is like. It's a direct method. However, it's very difficult to visualize and quantify how the fiber really change with the polyelectron lines. Because they have variable size and their surface is rough and with some pores. So we also involve model cellulose materials in this study because their shape and dimension are tunable. For example, they can be uh, spherical beads, flat surface, or fiber-like filaments. They have smooth, smooth surface and uniform size, relatively. And especially, they can be uh, differently charged. This is very important to study the fundamental adsorption of polyelectron lines. <coughs> Another chemicals from fire retardant uh, chemicals. So we know that fire can create lots of uh, damages to both objects and a human's life, especially when plastic, uh, plastics are involved. The fire can spread very fast. So when we design wood fiber, based materials, we need to think about this. If we cannot stop the fire, at least we want to slow down the spreading of fire. So there's one approach that is to add a sub fire retardant polymers onto the fibers to impart the fire retardancy properties to wood fibers. So in these cities, we have uh, four papers. In paper one to three, we studied paper dry strength additives. In paper four, we studied fire retardant chemicals on top of fibers. More specifically, in paper one, I focused on the adsorption of paper dry strength additives on craft birch fibers with different surface charge. In paper two, with the knowledge from adsorption, I made paper with those strength additives and then measured the strength performance, and other properties. In paper three, we use model cellulose materials, for example, model cellulose surface, filaments, and beads to study adsorption, strength, and other properties. So in the paper four, my contribution was to study the adsorption of fire retardant chemicals onto the uh, fi pulp fibers, and my collaborators made the foam and test the fire retardancy. So now we are at the uh, results and discussion part one. <coughs> so in paper one, we have craft birch fibers used as medium charged fibers, dissolving grid birch fibers used as low charged birch fibers. In order to get high charged birch fibers, we add soft CMC to achieve minus 13 micro equivalent per, uh, per gram charge density. So we have these three uh, charged birch fibers, minus 13, minus 7 from crop birch fibers, minus 4.5 from dissolving grid birch fibers. So the surface charge was determined, uh, was determined, determined by polyelectroline titration. We first added a calculated amount of polydatamark, and then we measured how much left in solution, then calculated how much adsorbed onto the fibers. So yes, fibers are negatively charged. We first, then we adsorbed cationic starch. On top of cationic starch, we adsorbed anionic packs or anionic PAM. In the adsorption results, we can see that for the adsorption of cationic starch, with the increase of the surface charge of the cellulose fibers, the adsorption of cationic starch also increased, especially when we plotted the relation between the saturation adsorption amount of cationic starch and the surface charge, we found this linear relationship. These experiments were carried out in 0.01 sodium chloride, and the results are slightly lower than the theoretical electroadsorption. So all the results here indicate that adsorption cationic starch is pure electrosorption, which was driven by the entry begin of the release of counterlines. <laughs> so on top of uh, cationic starch, we adsorb the APAM or PEX, 
And here we see very different phenomena. The adsorption of APAM packs didn't show the linear relationship with the uh, cellulose fibers. So they are independent from the pulp fiber, uh, the surface charge of the fibers. Uh, when we compare the adsorption amount of PECs and APAM, we see that adsorbed amount of PECs were higher than PECs, APAM. That's because PECs have a lower charge density. They need more uh, PECs to compensate the charge from the pulp fibers. In this study, there was one interesting finding. When I added a slightly lower cationic starch, 40 milligram per gram, compared to the saturation adsorption amount of 44 milligram, just 4 milligrams per gram, there was no APAM adsorbed onto the pulp fibers. In the meanwhile, the adsorption of APAX was at the similar level uh, as this one, where I added 48 uh, milligram per gram cationic starch. So this indicates that adsorption APAM requires the recharging the fibers and it's quite strict, otherwise it will not adsorb onto the fibers. <coughs> but the results I presented just now was from polyelectrolyte titration. So polyelectrolyte titration is very efficient in determining the adsorbed amount of uh, polyelectrolytes onto pulp fibers, but we don't really know how the fibers change, if they really change. So here we, uh, we use uh, QCMD to study the adsorption of strength additives on model cellular surface. This is how QCMD look like. So we flow the solution through the chamber. If they can adsorb onto cellulose fibers, they will stay in the chamber. Otherwise, they will go away. And then the screen will display the frequency and dissipation change of the QCMD crystals. Then we can calculate how much they adsorbed or how much the cellular surface changed with the polyelectrolytes. Now when we look at the results from the adsorption of cationic starch, with the addition of cationic starch from both potato and, cationic, uh, uh, potato and corn, the total mass of the cellular fibers increased. Uh, when we added uh, packs on top of those cationic starch, Packs adsorbed very fast, and also the total mass increased. However, when we look at the results from uh, uh, those uh, synthetic PAMs, they are also cationic, the total mass of cellulose fibers uh, decreased. That's because they dissolved by the high charge density of those PAMs. Another advantage of QCMD is that we can see the in-situ adsorption kinetics. On the other hand, we cannot see that from polyelectrolyte titration. So adsorption is not only needed in strength additive study. We also want to know if they can adsorb and how much they adsorb on the fibers about other chemicals. So here's here is the example of fire retardant chemicals. So first, I adsorb this branch polyethylene as anchoring surface on pulp fibers. On top of that, I adsorb uh, the fire retardant chemicals, sodium hexametal phosphate and chitosan for three layers. Then I determine how much they adsorb uh, at each step. <coughs> So here we see the results. Uh, the absorption of uh, the sodium hexametal phosphate and chitosan grew steadily onto the fibers. There were some drops from the rinsing. The rinsing will remove those loosely adsorbed uh, uh, chemicals. When we look closely at the composition of the cellulose fibers, we see that so here, with only 9% of coatings, and the, the majority of the system was pulp fibers, 91%. They already show self-extinguishing uh, properties, and you will see that later in the fire test. Now, uh, when we compare the adsorption of uh, the chemicals, the adsorption amount of a cationic star, no, of uh, chitosan was all, 
almost always double amount of sodium hexametaphosphate. That's also because chitosan has lower chi density. Almost half of uh, sodium hexametaphosphate, they need more amount to compensate the charge from the fibers. This also indicates the adsorption here is pure, or at least electrosorption. <coughs> Summary of part one. So here we studied lots of adsorption. Adsorption of cationic starch is a pure electrosorption, and which was driven by the entry begin or release of counterions. And uh, adsorption of cationic starch is linear to the surface charge of the pulp fibers, while APEM packs were independent from the initial fibers surface charge. In a QCMD study, we see that uh, QCMD results can demonstrate the adsorption kinetics and also the total mass change of the cellular surface with polyelectrolytes. The last one is adsorption of uh, the fire retardant chemicals. They indeed grow steadily onto the fibers. So now we are looking at the results and discussion part two, strength performance of all the the strength chemicals. <clears throat> With the knowledge of adsorption, we made paper and measure the tensile index and density here. So we see that all the strength chemicals were very efficient. They increased the tensile index dramatically without compromising the density, maybe except for this one, this uh, C craft fibers. Uh, there were some densifying about the density. But another important information of this figure is that if we compare the fibers from this, uh, this craft fibers and C craft fibers, they are intrinsically the same fibers. But we were able to achieve a higher tensile index. That's because these C craft fibers have a higher surface charge, so we can add, we can add more dry strand chemicals to get a higher, even stronger paper. In terms of the bending stiffness, taking the dissolving grid fibers as an example, adding cationic starch increased the bending stiffness by 2.6%. However, on top of the cationic starch, we added these packs. The bending stiffness was increased by 25%. Bending stiffness is a very important impacting board. It uh, will prevent that it uh, collapses. This is the same case also for other fibers, for craft fibers and C craft fibers. <coughs> so, paper strength are affected by the strength of fibers. Uh, the strength of a fiber fiber joint and also the number of fiber joints per volume paper. So we are interested in how our strength chemicals will affect the single fiber fiber joint. Instead of using pulp fibers, which are hard to handle and they are also more variable, we developed these filament joints in our lab. Uh, during the measurement, I noticed that uh, some joints broke from the broke from the filaments rather than from the joints. So I interpreted the data with a success ratio, which uh, refers to the joints broke from the joint area. For the reference filament joints, we have 60% of a success ratio, but all the strand chemicals decreased the success ratio because the joint was even uh, strongly bonded, they could not break before the filament broke. Especially with the GPAM uh, here, we have GPAM 10 plus PEX, GPAM 5 plus PEX, GPAM 10, GPAM 10 plus PEX. All the filaments broke before the joints could break. However, there's one exception here with uh, CPAM PD, which is not the strand chemicals. Only this one has a higher success ratio compared to the reference fibers. And uh, interestingly, on top of uh, CPAM PD, we add a sub the packs. 
and then the success ratio decreased again because PAX is a very efficient strand of chemicals. Of course, we don't want to see the filaments broke during the measurement. We want to know exactly how the joint, uh, how strong the joint strength is like. Especially in the measurement, we found that the original filaments are around 10 times stronger than the joints. We know that something that we, we can improve. So I tested the load. Surprisingly, when I decreased the load from 1.5 uh, kilograms, the, the measurements here was, uh, uh, was measured with, with the joints here was, were formed with 1.5 kilograms, which refers to 8.8 .8 kilopascal pressure. So when I decreased the load from 1.5 to 50 grams, we got the higher shear strength and all the filaments broke from the joints. That's what we want. But uh, we know that we need to test more loads in order to find the loads that cannot form the joints and the load that started to break the filaments. This also reminds us, uh, reminds us that when we make a paper, the paper present conditions are very important. They can be temperature, load, and also the time. So here's a summary of part two. We see that varying the surface charge of cellulose fibers can be used to tune the strand properly of the papers. The higher surface charge you have, the higher amount of uh, strand additives you can add to the system, then you get a higher, a stronger paper. And then the filaments joints were all enhanced by strand additives. But in the meanwhile, we noticed that Filament joints forming conditions are very critical. For example, press and load, among others. So now we are at the results and discussion part three. These are very interesting results. <laughs> My colleague Nadia has been working on this, so you will see more results from her. Uh, hydrogel. Hydrogel bees have the ship ad advantage, so we can actually see the interface uh, of the cells bead, uh, bead the joints. So here we see that for the reference bead, bead joints, they form this kind of very thin interface. But with the strength of chemicals, for example, this uh, potato cation starch, potato cation starch plus PEX. GPM5 or GPM10, they all form the wrinkles at the interface after drying. And again, for CPM PD, which is not a strand chemicals, so they form a similar uh, joint uh, interface as a reference bees. We speculated that uh, the wrinkles might be from the modular difference of the adsorbed chemical layer and also the cellulose. Once they are drying, they have different stress, then the surface will form uh, uh, wrinkles compared to the cellulose. And these kind of wrinkles might be the reasons that why paper strength can increase with the strength chemicals because they have a more joint area. The higher joint area you have, the, the stronger fiber-fiber jo joint you have, then the stronger paper you have. <clears throat> so here is a fire retardancy chemical uh, retardancy uh, test from the adsorption of fire retardant chemicals. So in the horizontal test, we see that for even for the one bilayer with only one bilayer of uh, sodium hex matter first feed and the chitosan, we got this self extinguishing properties, and then for the Two bilayers or three bilayers, the cells form show non igniting properties. In the vertical measurements, the, the vertical fire measurement was more harsh. So, with the bi one bilayer, uh, the cells form burnt, but the skeleton was reserved. And with uh, two bilayers and three bilayers, they show, uh, show self extinguishing properties. But the main point is that when we uh, adsorbed 
fire retardant chemicals, we decrease the heat release ratio because they cannot release, re, they cannot burn, so they don't release uh, heat. However, there's also drawback in this system. We saw the smoke, we saw the smoke production ratio increased uh, we, uh, after adsorbing those fire retardant chemicals. Yeah, this, this is not what we want, even though they cannot burn. So summary of part three, we see that the, the bead joints demonstrated the wrinkles at the interface. And we also see that uh, the self-stand cellulose foam coated with sodium hex matter first feed and the chitosan show fire retardancy properties. So now we are approaching to the end. The conclusion of the thesis in paper one, we found that adsorption of cationic starch is linear to fiber surface charge, while APAM and PEX were independent of the initial surface charge. In paper two, we found that fiber surface charge can tune paper strength with the strength additives. In paper three, we study the model cellulos materials and they offer the opportunities to study the molecular interactions between strength additives and cellulose materials. In the paper four, so as I presented just now, the sodium hex matter first feed and chitosan adsorbed onto the fibers by layer by layer can impart fire retardancy properties. So here are some thoughts uh, from me. Uh, I think or it's interesting to link the adsorption theory, adsorption experiments with the paper strength to find this kind of uh, a chain from the theory to the application. Then, well, for the scientists, when they formulate new chemicals, it will be very interesting to have uh, universe knowledge so you can avoid those mistakes. You don't have to try those, or you know something might be very interesting. The last one that I think is very important, although we want to use those model cellulose materials in a uh, polyelectrolyte study, but we are lack of international standards, so it's hard to commercialize them. So finally, I would like to thank all of you who are here and people who are in Zoom and my supervisors, Tobian, Lars, Mari, Liv, and my colleagues in Finland, KDH, and Italy. And also my funding agencies, uh, Marie Curie Fellowship by EU, Gamir, and KDH. But the most important people are my colleagues in fiber technology division, and my former colleagues in fiber and bioeconomic team in Gamir. Thank you very much. Thank you.